Excellent. So last topic I'm going to share with you. It's about the impact of anesthesia in the success of external cephalic version. And I'd like for us to start with uh, two questions, and I'm going to let you take a stab at uh, answering them, and then we'll come back to them at the end. Question number one. During external cephalic version, the most common adverse event is fetal maternal transfusion. Is it vaginal bleeding? Is it a transient abnormal fetal heart rate or cord prolapse? And question number two, the optimal anesthetic option for a patient scheduled for external cephalic version, is it a fentanyl PCA? Is it an anesthetic level with 2% lidocaine with epinephrine? Or is it an analgesic level with 2.5 milligrams of intrathecal bupivacaine? I'll let you just take a quick answer and we'll see if the answers are the same at the end of my talk. In summary, I'm going to start with the summary. Breach presentation is the most common of all abnormal presentations with an estimated incidence of about 3 to 4 percent of fetuses at term. As the vaginal delivery of a fetus in the breech position is risky, delivery by C-section is preferred by most institutions. And breech presentation is thus a common indication for C-section. A woman with a primary C-section has approximately a 90% probability of a repeat C-section in future pregnancies. And as you have heard for the past few lectures, these future pregnancies carry an associated higher risk of maternal morbidity and mortality. One approach to get the babies to turn to cephalic presentation and thus avoid the C-section is external cephalic version and regional anesthesia may actually increase its success. So let me start again with a patient scenario. And here um, is a woman who is 28 years old, G1P0. She had an ultrasound at 36 weeks gestation, which revealed a structurally normal fetus in the breech position, a posterior placenta, a normal amount of amniotic fluid, and a uterus that was actually structurally normal. Her medical history is also significant for obesity. She has a BMI of 30.2 kilograms per meter squared. She suffers from gastritis, is on omeprazole for that, and from migraines. Her questions at the time of this 36-week uh, ultrasound were pretty simple. What, what is breach, and what are my options for delivery? And I'm going to be telling you about her intermittently throughout my talk. Let's answer her first question. Breach presentation occurs when either the baby's bottom or the legs are the first fetal parts to appear at the uterine cervix. Both the incidence and the type of breach vary with gestational age. Before 28 weeks, as many as 40% of fetuses are in the breach position. Most of these guys actually change to vertex by 34 weeks, but about 3 to 4% of the fetuses remain in the breach presentation a term. A complete breach involves flexion at both hips and knees. Incomplete, one or both hips and knees are extended, or one or both feet are presenting, so a footling breach would fall into this category. Frank breach, lower extremities are flexed at the hip and the knees are extended, and this is the one most frequently seen at term. There are several factors that can contribute to a breach presentation. Some are maternal and some are fetal. In terms of maternal, we have factors involving uterine distension, as might be seen with uh, multiparity or multiple gestation. Fibroids or pelvic tumors, uterine abnormalities. And then there are fetal factors, like hydrocephalus, anencephaly, macrosomia, and then there are other factors that can contribute, like a preterm gestation, placenta previa. Well, how about the options for delivery of a fetus in the breech position? Like with any other fetus, it will be either vaginal or C-section. And in the year 2000, HANA conducted the term breech trial, where the perinatal mortality and neonatal morbidity and mortality were significantly lower among the planned C-section delivery group with 1.6% compared to the planned vaginal delivery, which was higher at 5%. So let me use another real life case to illustrate one of the challenges involved in delivering a breech baby. 
This is a little different in that it involves a twin gestation. And here's a 42-year-old woman, G1P0, presents at 38 weeks for induction of labor due to twin gestation. Her initial ultrasound revealed the babies to be cephalic and transverse. Her induction was started, epidural catheter was placed, and once ready to deliver, we moved to the operating room, as is our practice, where the first twin was delivered without difficulties. But the second baby changed his mind and actually decided to come down as a double, uh, double footling breach. The delivering obstetrician, being someone with experience in breach vaginal deliveries, made the quick decision to proceed with a breach extraction. Another obstetrician came in to help. The legs, the torso, the arms were delivered successfully, but the head was stuck. And maneuvers to deliver the baby's neck were tried, as uh, shown here, with pressure on the maxilla, bringing the shoulders down, and a second obstetrician applying external pressure in the abdomen. And that wasn't working, so we called a third obstetrician, someone with expertise using Piper forceps. And the baby was successfully delivered that way. The baby did fine, the mother did fine, and everyone else lost about 20 years of our life expectancy, basically. <laughs> So by 2002, the rate of C-section for women in labor with preach presentation was 86.9%, leading to a decrease in the number of practitioners with the skills and experience to perform a breach vaginal delivery. In light of the diminishing expertise with breach vaginal deliveries and the risk to the neonate, cesarean section is the preferred mode of delivery. And the C-section rate has been climbing steadily since 1996, so that by the year 2010, it was around 32%. It has been proposed that the best way to reduce the number of C-sections is to decrease the number of those that occur among low-risk women delivering their first child. Why? Because having an initial C-section sets the stage for a woman's entire reproductive life, unless they opt for TOLAC. And in this country, in general, if your first birth is a C-section, there's about a 90% probability of having another C-section. And as we have heard again this morning, C-sections carry a higher risk for intraoperative and postoperative problems, longer recovery in the hospital, et cetera. Now, the options that were discussed with my patient at 36 weeks involved moxibustion and acupuncture, does anybody here know what moxibustion is? Because I'm going to tell you in the next slide for those of you who don't know. Also, external cephalic version and scheduled C-section at term. Well, moxibustion is a traditional Chinese medicine technique to promote versions of fetuses from breech to cephalic by utilizing heat generated by burning herbal preparations containing Artemisia vulgaris. And the Japanese term is moxa, hence the term moxibustion. And the heat is applied to acupoint BL67, which is right beside the outer corner of the fifth toe. The premise is that by increasing fetal activity, moxibustion promotes versions. Interestingly, in a randomized control trial published by Cardini, moxibustion, when performed in preemie gravitas for one to two weeks, starting in the 33rd week of gestation, proved effective for inducing an increase in fetal movements, as assessed by the mothers, and cephalic versions within two weeks of the start of therapy. Also led to an increase in vertex presentations at birth, as assessed by ultrasound. External cephalic version is a procedure by which manual pressure is applied externally to the mother's abdomen, with the goal of turning the fetus from breech or transverse to cephalic. Prior to the 1970s, external cephalic version was usually attempted before term because of the belief that the procedure would seldom be successful at term. Subsequent studies have shown that with the use of tocolysis to relax the uterus, external cephalic version could be achieved in a substantial proportion of women with breech presentations at or near term, and by that I mean from 36 weeks of gestation and onward. Both the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and ACOG caution against breech vaginal delivery 
and encourage external cephalic version to attempt to change the fetal position to cephalic and thus avoid that first C-section. The mean success rate for external cephalic version is approximately 58% with a fairly wide range between 35 and 100%. In general, external cephalic version is likely to succeed when the mother has had at least one pregnancy and childbirth, when no fetal part is located in the pelvis, so the uh, fetus is not engaged, the fetus is surrounded by normal amounts of amniotic fluid, when the uterus is relaxed, and hence the use of tocolysis. Most studies use tocolysis, most practitioners will use tocolysis. And when the procedure is done near term, again, 36 weeks and onward, before labor starts, preferably by a skilled provider, and we're gonna talk about neuraxial blockade. There is morbidity associated with external cephalic version. Everything in life has risks. There's transient or persistent abnormal fetal heart rate pattern, vaginal bleeding can occur, placental abruption, fetal maternal transfusion, emergency cesarean section, and perinatal mortality. The author in this study did a systematic review of studies of external cephalic version performed after 36 weeks. They looked at 84 studies in 12,955 women and concluded that serious maternal and fetal adverse outcomes associated with external cephalic version were infrequent. The one most commonly seen was transient abnormal fetal heart rate. Everything in life boils down to risks and benefits. There are risks to external cephalic version. There are benefits to it. You need to weigh in the small procedure related risk of the external cephalic version against the risk associated with a persistent breach presentation. For example, if the membranes are ruptured, there's a risk of cord prolapse. There are complications of a breach birth, whether vaginal or via C-section. Compared to no intervention, external cephalic version is associated with a decrease in the C-section rate. However, when compared to the general obstetric population, fetuses that have undergone a successful external cephalic version are still at a higher risk for delivery via C-section. Does regional anesthesia help enhance the success rate? Dr. Sultan and Dr. Carvalho reviewed six randomized controlled trials from 1997 to the year 2010. Two studies use an analgesic regimen consisting of two and a half milligrams of intrathecal bupivacaine, and four studies used anesthetic doses, either seven and a half milligrams of intrathecal bupivacaine or 2% lidocaine injected epidurally to obtain a T6 sensory level. The results, in the four studies that use anesthetic doses, an external cephalic version success rate of 60 to 90% was observed, compared to 45, 47% in the two studies that use an analgesic regimen. Yoshida conducted a non-randomized study in which a lumbar epidural catheter was injected with a total of 13 cc's of quarter percent bupivacaine. In the control group, no epidural was used. The external cephalic version success rate was higher in the epidural group compared to the non-epidural group. What are the advantages of using a regional, regional anesthetic for an external cephalic version? Well, if you use an anesthetic level, you may contribute to the procedure success. If the version is successful and induction of labor is planned, well, she already has an epidural that can be used for labor analgesia. Should fetal distress or maternal hemorrhage occur, an anesthetic is in place to facilitate a smooth transition to a C-section. What are the concerns? Well, a solid anesthetic level may allow the woman to tolerate excessive force, and that can result in maternal and or fetal morbidity. There are hemodynamic changes associated with neuraxial anesthesia that need to be attended to. There's a risk of postural puncture, which can be associated with a postural puncture headache, which then becomes your headache as you try to figure out how to treat her, bring her back for a blood patch, et cetera. And then delayed discharge. 
She has to be observed in your labor floor before letting her go home. Well, back to my patient. After hearing about the risks and benefits of the options her obstetrician presented, she opted for the most natural. She went for the moxibustion and the acupuncture. She underwent two treatments that unfortunately were not successful. At this point, she returned to her obstetrician and accepted an external cephalic version, which was scheduled to take place in our labor and delivery floor, and that's where I met her. And the plan was, if the procedure was to be successful, then she would go home. If the version was unsuccessful, the plan was to do a C-section at that moment. So our anesthetic plan was for an anesthetic. And we brought her to the OR, anesthetic was placed, the procedure was started, we, uh, the obstetricians were using ultrasound for intermittent monitoring of the baby. And five minutes afterwards, the fetal heart rate deteriorated. It didn't recover as quickly as they would have wanted. So a C-section was performed. Baby was born with good Abgars. Mother and baby are doing fine. So back to the questions. During external cephalic version, the most common adverse event is that of transient abnormal fetal heart rate. The optimal anesthetic is one that utilizes an anesthetic dose versus analgesic, and of the options there, 2% lidocaine plus epi is the best option. In summary, breach presentation is a frequent occurrence. It is the most common of all abnormal presentations with an estimated incidence of 3 to 4% of fetuses at term. As vaginal delivery of a fetus in the breach position is risky, delivery by C-section is preferred by most practitioners and institutions. Breach presentation ends up being a common indication for a C-section, and the challenge we face is to try to attempt to decrease that C-section rate by preventing the very first C-section in situations where the baby can be helped to turn to a cephalic presentation. External cephalic version is one such maneuver, and neuraxial anesthesia utilizing anesthetic doses can contribute to a higher success rate for external cephalic version. I want to thank you for your attention, and I think we're going to be doing questions at the end.